Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about leopard geckos. So this here is my leopard gecko, Luna. She is about two years old and a pretty healthy gecko. Looking a little bit fat the way she's sitting there, but don't worry, she's not. Um, so today we're going to talk about the, the setup for these animals because on my last video I had a few comments about the substrate. Um, people are very concerned that loose substrate will cause impaction. That is not actually the case. Um, if you think about where these animals live in the wild, lots of people say they live on compressed earth and it's all very rocky and whatever. In some areas, yes, but these animals span three countries and where I've seen them in the wild, it's a little bit deserty as well. The substrate that I have for Luna is a mixture of earth and sand. It will pass through a healthy digestive system with no issue whatsoever. If your animal is getting impacted, there is a good chance that um, you have a problem elsewhere, which I'm not going to point fingers and I'm not going to say, you know, about anyone in particular. But if your animal has a healthy diet, they have the right lighting, the right heating, um, they're very, you know, it's very uncommon for those animals to become impacted. Um, so we're quickly going to talk about UVB lighting, because I know a lot of people are confused, they don't think leopard geckos need it. I choose to use it, I firmly believe they do need it. Um, if you look at the skin on the leopard gecko, it's actually designed to absorb a huge amount of UVB in a very short space of time. When you start using a UVB bulb, you'll see your leopard gecko out in the morning and probably late at night as well, or sorry, early evening, when the light's still on. And they will get the amount of uh, D3 that they need in that space of time. Uh, you don't get that with usual basking lizards. They usually be out all day. Obviously leopard geckos are mainly nocturnal, but they do need that UVB, um, so they will they will come out and absorb it. Um, in the wild, um, UVB readings have been taken at the mouth of the burrows of leopard geckos, where they spend most of the morning and early afternoon. And there is a high UVB reading at the mouth of those burrows. So when you're providing a hide for your gecko, make sure it's big enough that they can get right to the back of it if they need to get away from the light. But there's also space at the front as well where the light touches. and um, they might feel more comfortable with the way that is. So I'm just feeding Luna at the same time here, so that's, if, any, if there's any uh, movement, that's all it is. Um, <clears throat> so, we're gonna talk about quickly about metabolic bone disease. I'm sorry if I'm racing through this video, trying to get everything said and uh, not have the video too long. Um, right, so MBD. You see a lot of pictures of geckos online that have got metabolic bone disease. That's where the bones are starting to twist, they can't walk properly and eventually either have to be euthanized or they will die a fairly painful death. Um, MBD is a direct lack of calcium, whether that's through the diet or a lack of proper lighting. If, um, if your gecko has MBD or has signs of MBD and you are dusting and gut loading your insects properly, then consider still installing a UVB light because UVB triggers the manufacture of D3 in the skin and that promotes calcium uptake. So if you have this light, it's kind of a fail safe in terms of um, making sure the amount of calcium and D3 on your uh, on your insects is enough. Because um, unless you know the exact right amounts and you can guarantee that the insects themselves aren't rubbing it off, then the light will really help you out there. Um, so I use a natural 2% UVB light for Luna. And since I've had it in, not only is she out more, um, she looks a lot healthier, she walks on four legs with her body up off the ground. If you see your leopard gecko dragging their body along the floor or their stomach is touching the floor, you may have the beginnings of an issue. Um, there are some exceptions to using UVB the way I do. So you can see in Luna's tank the UVB is bright and it reaches the ground without any kind of any blockage. Um, if you have a morph with extremely sensitive eyes, I would recommend using a UVB bulb still and having it at the 2% because they're still going to benefit from the lighting. But consider uh, diffusing it with some plants or something like that a little bit just so it doesn't reach them in this kind of direct way. Um, a lot of people panic about leopard gecko's eyes being incredibly sensitive. And whilst, yeah, they are, um, it's, you know, these guys come from incredibly hot countries and uh, very bright places and they, they do just fine. Um, now, if you've done all of this and you're looking after your insects properly, you're gut loading them, you're dusting them, and you have the right lighting and the right heating, 
and your temperatures are good, you can pretty much use any substrate you want. Um, impaction happens when your gecko is literally eating the ground. And if that's happening, you've got other worries. Um, mine doesn't eat the ground. <laughs> She's not eating her substrate. She has no interest in eating her substrate. Um, it was an initial concern to me because I'm still learning, same as everyone else. Um, I do feed her on these sandstone slabs, just in case she gets a bit enthusiastic. Um, that's more for her. I don't want her to have a mouthful of substrate if I can avoid it, which I can. So that's how I feed her. Um, she's a very eager feeder, so um, I just feed her her worms up on there. And when she's having any other insects, they go in and she can chase them down. Um, so that's that's really it. Um, so if, if you do want to have a chat with me about substrates and things like that, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, I will reply to you as soon as possible. Um, I'm also more than happy to share all of the papers and documentation that have been done to back up what I'm saying here. I, I promise you I'm not just uh, saying this because I believe it's true. It's, um, it's pretty proven fact at this point. Um, that being said, if you want to keep your leopard gecko on reptile carpet or paper towels, it's your animal, you're more than welcome to. Um, I keep mine like this because I want to, and that's uh, that's the main reason. It provides her with the enrichment I think she deserves, um, and the lighting I think she 100% requires. So that's why I've done that. Um, if, you, um, if you want to do things differently, obviously that's your choice. But I just wanted to say a few things about the way I do things to avoid any confusion uh, caused by the previous video. Uh, she's a very happy, healthy little girl, and um, I intend to move her to a bigger enclosure, which will be um, a little bit more natural, hopefully. So yeah, um, if you haven't subscribed and you want to see more videos like this, um, hit the subscribe button, I'd be incredibly grateful. Um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you didn't, um, <laughs> let me know, because I always want to improve. So thanks for watching, I hope you're having a great day. See ya.